want to go for another half an hour and give us the last question. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Welcome back to the Bray and Ethan podcast, episode 117, as my computer decides to shut off, actually, and there's something else open that shouldn't have. But uh, we're back, Ethan. It's been a little while since we've been interviewing a guest. You've been in Melbourne having an absolute wonderful time. I have. Had great fun. Back now, though, back into the swing back, of it. Back into the real world, as I would say. But yeah, back. Uh, and of course, Skinbro. And I did take my Skinbro stuff over to Melbourne for the two weeks, which was very, very handy. And of course, you can use code BRAINATHAN20 for 20% off at skinbro.com. Or you can get the essentials kit for fifty four ninety nine. We have a discount as well, so drop that down a little bit more. Hat locker, use code BRAINATHAN20 for twenty percent off at hatlocker.com.au. And this hat that I'm wearing now, that was useful over there at the yes, Grand Prix. Still over in, in uh, F1 mode. Yep, back back straight into it this weekend. And then Cheetah Clothing, I've got the shirt on today. This yep. also came to Melbourne with me. Yep, cheeky uh, plug. So all uh, everyone that supports the show. Supports us day to day, yep. realistically. No matter if you're in Perth or yep. afar, but it still might be very early on. But there seems to be a very special feeling at the Perth Demons after yeah. quite a while. Today's guest is uh, fresh off a league day, but Noah Cashard, welcome. No, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Pleasure we'll run with time. Cashy. Is that is that uh, the nickname or Noah? What do you prefer? Um, nah, most of the boys call me uh, Cashy. Yeah, uh, last name Cashard, so yeah, it just comes with that. Yeah, and there was a lot of guys that debuted as well for that league, so I'm, just, I'm sure we'll get into a little bit later on, but. One game into league footy. How's the body? Uh, what is it? Five days after, or six days after the first game. Yeah, no, I was um, pulled up pretty sore on, on Sunday and Monday, but um, our recovery's um, pretty good. So I'm feeling all right now. I'm ready to go tomorrow. But yep. um, nah, all good. And uh, Donga, a boy, talk us through uh, the pathway from railway wa- railways to the Perth Demons. And did you split your time in between Perth and country footy? Because I think you. Played both and managed to balance it pretty yeah. well. Yeah, so I um, most of my juniors was in Donga, which is yeah, so 60k south of Jelton. Um, so I did all my um, yeah, like tens, twelves, fourteens there. Um, and then after that, the numbers sort of dropped in Donga. They just um, there wasn't any sixteens or anything. So I went to um, Jelton, which is that's where Railways is, um, and that was my first year of high school as well. So it sort of made sense. I could after school go to training and that. So. Yeah, 16 at, 16's at Railways, um, my first year there. Um, and then the year after that, I did I played uh, leg for Railways. Um, and I think that's when I started my futures campaign. So um, I think I did a bit of training in the um, pre-season in Perth in the school holidays. And then um, I'd sort of um, I'd sort of train uh, like back home and then mum and dad would uh, drive me down on a Friday. Okay. Um, like Friday night, I missed half a day of school, which is yeah. pretty good. But... <laughs> Um, and then they'd, I'd play Saturday and drive back, so there's massive support from them, just a lot of long hours on the road. But um, So, yeah, futures that year with um, – and then, yeah, league that year for railways um, after futures. And then um, the year after that, I think I played – I did a bit of pre-season in Perth again with the Colts side. Um, I played the first six games, I think it was. Um, I think I was planning to play about ten that year, just – um, coming up every now and then, but I played the first six. Um, I had a really good relationship with the coach, so I'd, I'd yeah, I'd be training in Donga and Jelton with the team, and then um, mum and dad would drive me up again on a Friday um, to play on a Saturday, and then drive me back. I don't think I was good company. I think I'd just sleep the whole way, and <laughs> I'd wake up. I'd be in Perth, but um, no, it was good to play those first six games. And then I got, um, I hurt my groin. Um, and I then I think I had a few weeks off, and then I played a game back home. I probably shouldn't have, and um, heard it again. So I think I missed most of the rest of the year. So it was about eight weeks off, and um, came back. That was the rest of the Perth year. But I played finals for railways that year as well, and uh, went out straight sets, which wasn't wasn't handy. But then, um, yeah, that was my last year back home. And then I think it was last year, 2023. I uh, moved to, moved into my aunties in in January, and. Um, yeah, that's that was from last year in Colts last year, which was a pretty good year for the team, and um, and yeah, so it's journey so far. Yeah, research suggests that you're an all star in the GNFL. Is that basically an all Australian? <laughs> oh no, nah, so it was, it's pretty much just like team of the year for right. Um, so the yeah, waffles, you so. could say it's an all Australian. Yeah, <laughs> maybe in the GNFL. But like that. how does um how did you come to Perth? Because I feel like Geraldton, Australia, I think of it, the East Fremantle. Yeah, so. Mm. 
So Dongra is the Perth zone. Yeah. Um, Dongra and then a bit of inland's Perth zone, but then Jelton, North Hantenham, sort of East Frio. So most, yeah, most of my mates are playing for East Frio. So yeah, it's right. yeah. good banter between us. A rivalry. Yeah. So how far does the Perth zone go down from Dongra? Um, I think it just goes all the way into like Three Springs, Karnama, Mora. Jinjin. Yeah, Jin, yeah, Jinjin. Yeah. yeah, I think, it, yeah, Jinjin probably stops there. Yeah, okay. So pretty big zone up there. Yeah. The Demons. Yeah. Well, you won the Spirit of the Colts Award last year. Did that come by a bit of a surprise by you? Yeah, I thought... Um, Is that a competition or a Perth No, nah, it was just award? the Perth Award. Okay. Um, I think that's... I think Tom Waite would have expected that last year. <laughs> he was the sort of... Yeah, the bloke in the team that was expecting that. But, um, no, nah, it was nice to get that. I think it's just... I actually don't know what the award's for. <laughs> just the way you hold, hold yourself, I reckon, off the field, on the field. Yeah. Well, your footy did the talk, most of the talking, making the Colts team of the year, probably best on ground in the prelim. And then watching the Colts grand final back, uh, the commentators described you as one of the best out there too. Wasn't the result you boys were after, but how was it in that grand final year making such an impact? Yeah, it was It was a tough one because we, I, I played all right, but we still didn't win. So it's still disappointing, but... It was such a great experience. Like I'd never, I've never played at a stadium or anything like that. Um, so just driving under with the team under the stadium, um, and then being on the ground was pretty surreal. But um, no, it was a great experience. It was, um, yeah, it's disappointing we didn't get the win, but it was, it was, yeah, a good year for. You them. seemed pretty composed out there. Like you didn't seem like the occasion sort of got to you too much. Nah, so, yeah, it was, it was a tough one. I just, yeah, knew it was a grand final and. Um, wanted to do as much as I can. Um, I started cramping up actually in the third quarter and fourth, which has annoyed me a little bit because I hadn't cramped all year. But um, yeah, it just got the best of me then. Oh well, you mentioned how'd you find playing on Optus, but I guess how how was it? I guess compared to playing at a smaller country ground up there in Donga and Geraldton. Yeah, well, it, yeah, the um, you get like the supporters in the country are, are really good like they get around you a lot and you, you sort of do know most of them because they're mm. your mates and your team but um yeah optus was it was still massive atmosphere um even just after a goal or any sort of moment you could just hear the crowd especially in that mm. last quarter um but yeah definitely going back home in the country and listen to that them support as well is pretty cool yeah for sure and your last two games, so that grand final and then your league debut under lights in front of a decent crowd. So they're two pretty ga- big games back to back, albeit yeah. like a summer apart. Six months apart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, was a round one league debut this year always the goal? Because you are still cult eligible. And, and what did you have to do in the preseason to be ready for the step up? Um, yeah, it was definitely a goal coming into preseason. Um, I speak to Harry Taylor quite a bit. So he helped me, being a yeah, re- retired AFL player, helped me a lot with what I need to do to be ready to be pre-season. So I did a lo- lot of work before the pre-season started in the November. He just set me up with a lot of running and um, did a few skill sessions with a lot of the East Rare boys and him up in Jelton, um, which really helped me. And then just pre-season, I think, just the, yeah, work, just understanding the worth ethic, ethic, what you have to do to um, be in that league side. But, um, yeah, it was a really positive and um, injury-free pre-season, which helped me, so... Hopefully I can play a few more this year. Thoughts on night footy? You've got another one against West Perth uh, tomorrow at the time of recording. Is yeah. It's a pretty big crowd there. Yeah, I'm sort of just still getting getting used to it because, yeah, last year we were kicking the jaw off the ground, but now it's <laughs> sort of, I don't know what really to do all day. Yeah, I think I just try true. to stay active. And, but I don't mind their away games. It's good, good atmosphere, good crowd that get around it. I think Perth really get around, like those twilight night games. Because I remember in 20, 2020, yeah. I think it was, where they... Played a lot of night games, especially that one that sent them into the grand, fi- uh, not the, fi- the grand finals, just the finals, yeah. that game. It was all electric. Yeah. Definitely and last week you could, like, the supporters were just huge. Mm. Like, the, that last quarter was massive. Yeah. Well, what do they call it? The Red Leg Bar? Yeah, the, oh, the Red Leg Can Bar, I think yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that goes off on yeah, twilight. Yeah. They, were, they were super loud at three-quarter time as well. Do you know if yeah. the Guernseys are going to be this? Were they just one-time Guernseys? Um, I don't, I don't mind them. Yeah, yeah so I think they were a one-time Guernsey, but uh, they might be trying to get a few more in with them because I think they did like them, but one-time thing, I think. But yeah. yeah, I saw it on Saturday or Sunday, and I was like, geez, let's just go onto their, 
the club's Instagram account and have a look. And there was no real announcement of them. It was just like, oh, these are like some of the jerseys we're going to use. I think there's another one as well that's a bit different to the Yeah, well, this year, well. it's 125th year, so this yeah. year we have our way and home Guernseys, which will be a bit different. But yeah. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like the more red, like, yeah. showing. Um, like, especially with South Fremantle with that yeah. retro jersey they did last year or the year yeah. before as well. Like, it's just different. But it might yeah. clash there's no, there's no West Perth. Yeah, you could say that. The thing. Yeah. It's nice though. Yeah. Um, well, you kicked a nice goal to get the boys up and about. Can you talk us through that? Uh, yeah, it was a nice, nice moment. I just saw the grass in front of me and took it. I probably <laughs> could have kicked it to the full forward. That had a lot of space out in the back, but um, it didn't spin the way I wanted. But it definitely went through, which was, which was nice. And um, yeah, I love that moment. Which was yeah, it was pretty cool. Celebration. Yeah, you gave the aeroplane to the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the boys got around you? Yeah, no, the boys loved it. Um, yep. Got around me. Well, yeah. Speaking of that, uh, been some handy recruits joined the club. What's the feeling having some of those AFL experienced guys around? Must feel like you can learn a lot quickly. Yeah, they're definitely definitely great on, but also off the field. Like They're just such a good voice for the boys and they keep the standards high. And um, No, they're just so great to learn off each training. They... Um, obviously teach you the skills they learn in the high system and um, definitely good for us younger boys but also the rest of the boys in the team just to learn off them and yeah they're good do you have personal aspirations to uh reach the top level i know you're probably just trying to establish yourself at waffle senior level first but is that a goal might be a dumb question because i feel like everyone probably does right. have aspirations yeah, yeah, yeah. no nah, it's definitely yeah it's definitely a big goal that i want to get drafted but um yeah just trying to take week by week at the moment and if it if it comes it's good but if not i'll keep working on it but yeah it's definitely aspiration of mine and so many chances for overages nowadays as well yeah. compared yeah. to five or so years ago yeah um well you mentioned to us that you're, you're on holidays at the moment so i guess what's life like off um, the field what are you doing day to day um so i'm an ea teacher yep um at shandon college so um it's nice to be getting those holidays every now and mm. then and you're, you're starting at nine and finishing at three most days. So it's pretty cruisy for footy and then, yeah, also getting paid in the holidays. It's, yeah, it's pretty yeah, good. Not horrible. Yeah. yeah. What's that balance like between like full-time work but then I know like you've obviously played a game when the holidays would have been on but like training and like because Waffle is semi-professional. Yeah. So what's that like? Um, oh, work's pretty flexible. So if I, if I do need time off with – with the waffle or anything, they'll definitely give it to me. But like I said, like a lot of the other boys are working a lot longer than days than me and yeah. doing it probably harder. So for me, it's it's pretty perfect job for me at the moment while playing footy. Um, but yeah, so it's I'll, I'll stay there as long as I'm yep. the waffle, I reckon. Yeah, well, we'll move on to the uh, Instagram Q&As, of course, at Bray and Ethan on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook. First one, Jasmine Johansson underscore. Is it true that you kicked a goal from 65 metres out on the run? Um, I don't know what game she's talking about, but I think the, she might be talking about one at railways. I think so, yeah. yeah I think we'll, I saw this video. Yeah, I think it was like bounces <laughs> like... Yeah, I think in. I was on the corner of the goal screen and I just sent a barrel and it went in and um, that's probably what she was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oscar Hein Baston, what's it like having such a great role model? Oh, he's assuming you're speaking about him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he, um, no, he cut my hair, so he's he's good for that. But um, no, hopefully he can find his way in the league side, which I think is pretty close to play with some footy with him. But no, he's, yeah. he's a good bloke to be around. He debuted last year, did he not? Yeah, he did. Uh, oh, yeah, he yeah, played he one game couple, last yeah. year. Yeah, that's right. So hopefully he can crack back into the side. Yeah. Uh, next one from Jai Thurston. Yeah. Who else are Geraldton footy players that should be playing down in Perth? Brick. Uh, Question mark. <laughs> um, that's just an inside joke, Brig, I think. Um, but he's probably trying to talk about himself here. <laughs> but um, there's still a few good footy players in Jelton that have got to come out. But, yeah, Jai, Jai played a few games in the Colts last year. If he moved down, he, um, he'd probably still be in the side. But him and Blake Taswell, um, good schoolmates that probably could be down here playing East Row. But, yeah. Jai again. Explain your 18th birthday party, please. What happened every detail? <laughs> oh, no, nah, it, it was a good celebration, um, but that's, that's probably yeah. all I'm going to say about that night. <laughs> As most 18ths are, good yeah. celebration. Yep. Lockie McGlade, hardest opponent you've played on? Um, 
Last year, I reckon Colin Sanchez, probably. Mm. He was a really skillful silk mover. Um, I only played that one game against him, but he's probably the toughest I've played against. But I'm sure there'll be a few few more this year in the league that will yeah, mm. definitely be challenging. Uh, Kai underscore Wilson underscore. What's the transition from the GNFL to the Waffle like? Sort of touched on it, but... Yeah. Um, probably just like in the Waffle, in the GNFL, you have probably five to ten good players in that side and there's a few there's only probably a few that are really fit but then you come to the waffle and yeah everyone's everyone knows how to play the footy game and um the, everyone's so fit so that, yeah probably the pace and the skills is probably the main thing clay dot woody do you prefer bar peanuts or cashews <laughs> that's an interesting question <laughs> um probably cashews okay <laughs> brody x mc is it true you condition and comb your hair before every game no, that is not true. <laughs> I don't, know. don't know where he's got that one from, but yeah. Uh, Brody again, gym routine. Um, gym routine. Yep. Um, well, we just have our, our gym program from the S and C, so that's yeah, probably, that is. Yeah, that's mm. probably about it. Kale underscore Asprey, best memory in your football career. Um, best memory. Probably, yeah, probably the grand final last year or, um, yeah, definitely the the league debut will stay in my memory for a while. So, yeah, yeah. Other, yeah probably it's most nice recent. Nice Gatorade shower after? Uh, yeah, well, we had, um, oh, we had Big Dakota um, who passed yeah. away on the holidays in the middle of the circle, so he got the honours, but um, no, it, was, it was good to get around him on the weekend. Oh, yeah. uh, Libby Holb won, I believe it is. Yeah. Uh, Who's your hairdresser? Um, <laughs> nah, so Oscar cut up on the weekend, but Libby's a, um, one of my mum's best friends, she's a good family friend that usually cuts my hair, so she used to be a hairdresser, so yeah, Libby. Cheeky plug hairdresser. for her. Yeah. Fighting in the queue with Oscar. <laughs> uh, Hamish underscore Campbell 11, which club would you rather play for, Railways or Dongara? Yeah, I'm going to make some people mad here, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't played a league game for Dongara yet, um, but... Have you played any senior footy at Dongra? Or was it nah, just juniors? No, nah, yeah, so I finished in 14s and then yeah. played 16s in the league at Railways. Yeah. But if I got a week or two off this year, it would probably have to be Railways just to get back with those boys and play a game. But um, definitely in the future, I'd, I'd need to play a game for Dongra. Mm. Yeah. Get on the bucket list. Yeah. Should be heaps of time anyway. Yeah. So it should be all right. Uh, underscore Ryan, underscore Lee, underscore thoughts on Oscar's hairdressing skills. <laughs> um. It was funny because we cut it at Ryan's house and he, he sort of shaved the top and he did one side. Yeah. Um, and then he sort of turned me around on the chair and he started doing the same side. And I was like, Oscar, what are you doing? You're doing the same side. And he's like, nah, just trust the hairdresser, mate. <laughs> anyway, I did the other side and then he sort of like looked at me and he's like, oh, I've forgotten the side. So, so it took another 20 minutes or whatever. So <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be going back to Oscar. Stiff. Well, Lib- Libby, Libby's got a, yeah. got yeah. a job lined up. Yeah. Cooper underscore more underscore seven says, hey, no, a huge fan. What's your advice to be able to kick goals like you do? Uh, Cooper's pretty good himself, actually. But, no, nah, I don't know. I just um, find a moment and try to take it. I was a bit inaccurate last year. I think I kicked 20-odd points. But, um, no, nah, just try to kick a bit straighter this year. Uh, I think it's... Judd Ingleton. Judd Ingleton. Yeah. Best Colty at the days. Oh. Um, Controversial. Yeah, well, last year there was a there was a lot of them. It was such a tight group, like the, mm. probably the tightest group I've played with. Um, so it was definitely good playing with like Mitchell Keane is back from Donger as well. So and James Olds around there. So it was good playing with boys from back home. Um, but no, nah, it's a hard question because all the there's probably five ten boys that yeah are definitely going to be playing with again, and I love playing with them. So there's no no one player, but there's, yeah, there's a lot of them. Was it easier to debut with like? You got eight guys club making their club debut last week. M- must be pretty daunting to play league footy, but when you got guys who played culture yeah. like a larger scope, like that must help. Yeah, I think it'd be a, if it would be a lot harder if it was just you, I reckon, because then you're sort of the spotlight for yeah. that, that week. But um, it was good having all the other other boys um, having their debut, especially Elijah as well, and other Colty making his debut, and he dominated. But um, I definitely reckon that was a lot easier because not all the pressure is just on you to yeah. go well. It was sort of all the other boys as well. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely a lot easier with the other boys. 
And a late one has come through from Caleb Dempster Park. It's daisies or hippie on a Saturday night. <laughs> That's <laughs> controversial. Yeah, probably the hippie, I'd say. Yeah, I'm on the same page there. Yeah. I don't know what our, que- our answer Caleb was searching for, but <laughs> there you go. I think he loves daisies. He loves daisies, yeah. yeah. He, he's there most weekends, I think. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that win on Saturday, obviously there was a heap of you guys that debuted. Do you reckon, uh, like, because let's be real, everyone thought Subi was going to win. Yeah. Do you think all the fresh, like, fresh, younger guys that debuted probably helped you guys get over the line? Fresh, like, yeah, I think it was just, legs in a way? Yeah. Well, I think it was just, we had, we felt like we had such a good pre-season, especially yeah. the coach reckons it was 10 times better than last year. Um, and I think it was just the belief in the group. Of, we had a few good practice matches and then... Um, just, yeah, we're definitely a fitter side this year. So yeah. uh, second half last year was on oh, – third quarter not so great, but fourth quarter we ran over them a bit, and I think that will be a good good strength of ours this year. But, um, yeah, I think just a much bigger pre-season and the belief in the group's massive this year, so hopefully yeah. we can win more often. Well, yes. All right, well, we'll move on to the quiz. We will. Uh, having a look at that leaderboard, still no one yet to get over 10. Yeah, I got terrible out memory. So out, of, out, out of a possible 14. There's um, some recent questions, though, so... Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll start off with question number one, as we always do. What is your height and weight on the Waffle website? Yeah, I think I know this one. It's, it should be updated. It's not yet, but 181 and 78 kilos. 79. Oh, has been Actually, up. no, sorry. It is, it is right. 78, yeah. Just got the uh, Waffle is profile that a, is, that a, is that an auto-correct or something there for you, Ethan? Maybe. Maybe I just got it <laughs> wrong, but... Uh, <laughs> Yep, 181 and 78. Yep. One from one. one from one. Question number two, what was the winning margin against Subiaco in round one? Uh, 10 points. 14 points. <laughs> Close. Yeah, I think it's 10. Question number three, how many disposals did you personally have in that game? Um, uh, 11. Correct. The app says 11, but the website says 10. So yeah, it's a common uh, comment. Don't know how that happens. Yeah. <laughs> Two, from Two from three. Number four, true or false, you kept Subi scoreless in the last quarter. True or false? False. They Correct. Goal, I think. You kept, they are not scoreless, but uh, you kept them goalless. Yeah. So they scored a point. Oh. Was that all? They scored just a point. In the last quarter, yeah. Wait, wait. Three, All right, from four. three from four. Question number five. Have you given away or received more free kicks personally in your Colts career? Um, I reckon given away. Yes, yeah. only just though. Only just, it's 34 to 32, so Jeez. it's pretty fair. <laughs> yep. But close. Four, four from, from five. five. We are looking good here. Touch wood. Uh, <laughs> Number six, more marks or tackles personally in your Colts career? Uh, did tackling you last year? I'd, uh, tackles. Correct. Yeah. 111 tackles, 100 marks. So it's yeah. fairly close. Yeah. Five from six. Flying here. Four this questions to go. I think this might be the toughest of the lot. All right. Question number seven, you've kicked the same amount of goals and points in your Colts career. What is that number? What is that number? Yeah. Um, I think I kicked 21 last year. Uh, uh, 25, 25. 19, 19. Ooh. A bit lower than you yeah, thought. Yeah, a bit lower than I thought, yeah. Still good. Five from seven. Question number eight. How many disposals did you have in the Colts preliminary final last year? 24? 21. It's 21 oh, on the website. Uh, <laughs> so I don't the know. The app could be different with the app. I don't know if there anymore. Three, yeah, three more. If it was like 22 or something. Yeah. If you said 22, then that'd be yeah, interesting. Better, right. uh, five from eight. I need to get back on the <laughs> roll here. Question number nine. True or false? Perth haven't beaten West Perth since 2020 in, the le- in league footy. Haven't beaten them? Since. In the last yeah. five years. True or false? That's true. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So that I think it's actually, I don't know if they did beat them in 2020. I couldn't find it, but it's at least 2020. Yeah, far it's back. Like, yeah. yeah. So, um, you hopefully you'll break that, break that tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. So six from nine. 
Question number 10. So who am I? So if you get five points, take you up to 11. Yeah. Outright right top. Outright right top. Uh, so it's a who am I? Basically five points if you get the birthday. And then it's just a lesser point yeah, each, each line yeah. under that. Someone where you've come from or yeah. where you're at or yeah. whatnot. You might not personally know. Yeah. But someone from related to where you've been. Uh, yeah. Related yeah. to your journey. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. I was born on the 23rd of February, 1994. Uh, I'm going to take a guess here. Jago Mira. Bang! <laughs> Correct. He moves <laughs> to the top of the leaderboard. Yeah. Had that one in the back of the mind. So, what, have you done some revision there? or? Nah, what? just, he's a dongra lad. Well, yeah, the Probably. rest of that. Yeah. I, w- I won best on grand, the grand final for railways when I was 16. Yeah, I would have got that as well. <laughs> Probably would have got that. I yeah. won a rising st- star award at Gold Coast. I'm yeah. currently in my third AFL club. I wear the number two Jago. Yeah, he's Probably the biggest Dongra name out, so yeah, yeah, I got that one straight away. Well, yeah, well, there you go. Top of the table. Any personal connection to him or you just you just know oh, no. your regions very well? Yeah, just know my regions. I did a training with him once back home yeah. and um, contact him every now and then, but yeah. Yeah. It's Not bad, eh? Winning a best on ground when you're 16. Yeah, 16. Later. Stephen Canelio, yeah. just about. Yeah. I don't think, did he actually win it? Uh, he got 2010? No. Cracker won it. Cracker oh, did he that's got, right. he got best yeah. on there, I think. Yeah, from the Swans coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably, I think so. Yeah. But um, yeah, Amira played league at uh, Perth as well when he was 17. So yeah. mm. five points. And that does take you to the very top <laughs> out of anyone we've had. So uh, far this year. Cricketers, cricket or footy. managers, so footy players. I'll yeah. just put you in there. So <laughs> uh, there is a long year ahead. So uh, hopefully mm. for your sake you can stay up there, but no yeah. promises. But um, I'm not sure what the reasoning is this year with why we haven't been getting – very, like high, high, high scores. scores. Like yeah. Last year Just we had four. Quiz, we had four on twelve, but the finish of the year, I reckon we had another five on eleven, and then ten downwards for the rest, pretty mm. much. I thought I was going to be terrible then, but it was right. it's a common uh, thing that people say. They don't do. They don't think they're going to do well, and then they turn yeah, out yeah. to do well. You know what I might do just quickly now, go back to last year and see where some of the your Perth Colts mates sit. Yeah. From last year, so you can take some bragging rights potentially. I think, yeah, Oscar got 10 last year. Yeah. Uh, well, Colin Livingston isn't a Perth Colt anymore, but he was. Yeah. He, he made 10. Yeah. Riley Wills, 10. Yeah. Elijah Scoble, 9.5. And, and that is it out of the Perth boys, I think. It's just so a start, honestly. If you get a good start, yeah. like, you don't want to be playing catch up. So. And yeah. you are, th- you are the, the best demon that we've had in the last two years. Yeah. Well, um, that to that them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely feed it to them. <laughs> That's uh, some good momentum into West Perth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, absolutely take that. All right. Well, of course, it's all thanks to Skinbro, Hat Locker, and Cheetah Clothing. Their links will be in the show notes with the uh, discount codes as well. And a reminder: if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, you can of course watch on YouTube, or if you're on YouTube, you can obviously watch on. Or listen on Spotify, Apple as well. Subscribe, five star rating, like, whatever you need to do it would be nice. Uh, I know Noah's going to jump on Spotify on the, as soon as he gets out of here and he's going to give us a nice five star rating. So uh, get on yeah. it. Get on it. And um, well, Noah, we can't thank you enough for coming in today. And I guess all the best for against West Perth. And I guess by the time the recording comes out, whoever you're playing next week yeah. as well. So uh, good yeah. luck. Thanks for having me. Cheers, boys.